What is going on guys, Bengal again here coming back at you with another video and today we are rebuilding the Atlanta Falcons in realistic style and basically what that means is we're using the real 2020 draft class. However, no 2021, most of the classes are bad. I don't have time to create my own. It's too far out to really get a good scope of what that would be. So no 2021 class. Everyone asks me if I'm going to make one. No. I think I've answered that quite a bit. Uh, so please remember this time you won't, but whatever. Uh, we're rebuilding the Atlanta Falcons. It's an interesting team. They've been derailed heavily by injuries, but they've got so much talent. When you look at their team, like they've got some young players who have performed well in the past that have maybe stepped off a little bit like Desmond Trufant, but guys like Keanu Neal are one of the best in the league at their position, but have been unable to stay healthy. Matt Ryan won an MVP a couple years ago. Julio Jones is, if not the best receiver in the NFL, one of the top two or three. Really, really good player. I think he's probably either one or two it depends i think i'm gonna get, get a shit for this in the comments no matter who i say because everyone's going to disagree uh, i don't think michael thomas is number one or two i think it's probably uh, deandre hopkins and then i would probably even have antonio brown still ahead of michael thomas despite me hating antonio brown um but he does more than just catch uh slants and shallow crosses but that's beside the point for right now a lot of talent. This team is going to cut Devontae Freeman in real life, so we're going to do that as well. It's going to be interesting, but we're going to hop straight into the offseason, re-sign our players, head to free agency, do the draft, all that after a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Manscaped. Huge thanks to them. It is the best uh, manscaping product on the market. It's the only one. This is the Lawnmower 3.0. You got an upgraded motor, same skin safe technology guaranteed no cuts no nicks got an added flashlight what can't this thing do cut you shout out to manscape use code bangle link into the description save yourself a lot of money on a great product and of course that's 20 percent off that's free shipping that's two free gifts when you purchase the perfect package 3.0 using code bangle on manscape again link in the description code bangle 20 percent off two free gifts free shipping it's a great deal all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the roster. It's going to be pretty interesting to see what we do here because there is development um, all over the place in a negative way. Now, unfortunately, as I record this, the EA servers are down, which means I cannot import using the real-life roster, which means that some players that are not on the team anymore are still on the team, such as Mohamed Sanu. So I'm going to try and execute that trade with the Patriots uh, and get a second-round pick, whatever the exact details were. I'm going to find it. So, Mohamed Sanu is going to be traded. I'm, I mean, it's a realistic rebuild. Devontae Freeman's getting cut. So, I guess I'm cutting Devontae Freeman. I know I'm running the team, so I can make the decisions at this point as I take over, but I think I'm probably going to do that. Isaiah Oliver has superstar development, which, did he get that? Yeah, he did. That's interesting. That changes things a little bit for me because he becomes a lot more valuable. That is very, very interesting. Um, Devondre Campbell is going to be a free agent, I believe. It's an interesting team. Uh, I don't, I haven't said any of the names really, I realize, but, um, we'll talk about it. On the offensive line, we got Jake Matthews, Chris Lindstrom, who's a first round pick last year, Alex Mack, AKA his first name is actually Javon Mack. Maybe it's pronounced Javon. I have no idea, but he goes by Alex. I don't blame him. Javon Brown and Caleb McGarry, another first round pick. I think he was a tail end of the first round, if I'm not mistaken, uh, also a year ago, the Falcons had two. I think they, either they traded back up for McGarry or they traded up for Lindstrom. I think they traded up for Lindstrom. He was 31 in 2018. Austin Hooper's going to be a free agent. He's been a great tight end for them. Uh, Julio Jones, of course, one of the best receivers in football. Talked about him. Calvin Ridley's a beast. Justin Hardy. I mean, it's a decent receiver group for sure, even with Muhammad Sanu exiting. Devontae Freeman. Uh, behind him is Ish Smith. Um... Nope, he's a point guard for the Wizards. Behind him is Ito Smith. Sometimes I go brain dead. Matt Schaub is back here. We got Kurt Bankert. Uh, Kadri Allison is in here. On the defensive side of the ball, we have Foyasadi Olakun, Deion Jones. Bruce Carter is back in the NFL. No way. Duke Riley, too. Um, Kamal Ishmael. I don't know. Like, Is he a linebacker now? I knew him as a safety. All right. Um, there's Keanu Neal, we got DeMonte Casey, J.J. Wilcox, Ricardo Allen, Desmond Trufant, Kendall Sheffield, Isaiah Oliver, we got Adrian Claiborne, 
Grady Jarrett, Diedrich Sanat, Tyler Davison, Tack McKinley, and Vic Beasley Jr. Now, there are a lot of positions I want to upgrade on this team. That's the whole point of a rebuild. Of course, can't forget about the special teamers with Giorgio Tavecchio, the Italian lefty, and Matt Bosher. But we're going to go ahead and simulate to the re-signing period um, and make some tough decisions. I'm excited. So, Deion Jones, Grady Jarrett, Austin Hooper, Devontae Campbell, Matt Bosher, Tyler Davis, and Vic Beasley. All these guys are free agents. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. Now, I thought D. Hun Jones signed a monster contract extension. I'm going to look into this. Yeah, he signed a uh, monster contract extension. Four years, 57 mil, 34 mil guaranteed, $11 million signing bonus. So he shouldn't be a free agent here. But, of course, EA servers being down kind of complicates things. Grady Jarrett, Austin Hooper. I'd like to bring everyone back of those top three. After that, the lines become a little bit more blurred. All right, so some big contract extensions that we bring back Hooper, Jarrett, and Jones. A group that we needed to bring back, honestly. Three of the best players on the entire team. Devondre Campbell, I think I'm going to let walk. 27 years old, 81 overall. Not too bad, but with regression in this game at 28, he's not going to maintain that overall, and there's really no room for development. Uh, Matt Bosher, one of the best punters in the league. But it doesn't make sense to pay him this much. So if we bring him back, it'll be in the free agent period as opposed to just uh, this re-signing period. Tyler Davison, I'm going to let walk. Vic Beasley has been a disappointment after his second year, I want to say. So we're going to let him walk. Justin Hardy, no real need for him. Although he's been a role player for this Falcons team for a number of years now. Giorgio Tavecchio, kind of same deal as Matt Bosher. He's going to be asking for um, one and a half million. We just don't need to pay him that. And other than that, I'm probably good just to let most of these guys go. And we'll move on into free agency. So Kareem Hunt is in here, as is Kendall Fuller, Eric Ebron, Miles Jack. Miles Jack is probably the only one I'm going to offer on. Yannick Ngakwe is interesting as well. But I think Miles Jack fits our team. And uh, even though I haven't been doing a ton of rebuilds lately, I feel like it's been a while since we've gotten him in uh, any video. So I don't have the money for this. That's right. That's an issue. Ooh, that might not be an acquirable player. Oh, that's right. I have to trade Mohamed Sanu first. That's going to clear up some space. Okay, so I had to add a fourth and a seventh round pick to get this done. But Mohamed Sanu, four, seven for a second round pick from the Patriots. Now, it is worth noting that because I could not import the real life rosters using the online franchise, I had to simulate the season which means that the records are going to be different than what they are in real life, which means the draft order will be changed. The Dolphins have the number one overall pick. Then the Raiders, Vikings, Lions, Bucks. I think, funnily enough, the Falcons are actually in a similar spot uh, to where they pick in real life. So that's cool enough. But the top of the draft is going to be a little bit different, and there's not really too much I can do about it. Okay, so we would bring in Miles Jack, brought back Matt Bosher on a much more favorable deal it's just over one mil per year and miles jack is a big addition that is a nice replacement for devondre campbell and we'll probably eh, we'll consider a three four move but i think more than likely we're just going to kick miles jack outside to play left outside linebacker over duke riley not really trying to build an lsu um lb core but we could do that with the acquisition of maybe um Devin White or Patrick Queen in the draft if we wanted to go that route and see I think people are going to say like okay the Falcons are probably cutting Devontae Freeman in real life but you know you're running the team why don't you just trade him for value we're going to make it a little bit more difficult and we're just going to straight up cut Devontae Freeman um, and you gotta love incurring that penalty not ideal but uh, you know makes it a little bit tougher makes it a little bit more fun maybe that's not true but all right we're doing it it's happened it's done i know he hasn't been cut already but it, from all the reports he's going to be cut and even if he isn't now we've already done it this is in the event that that would happen brandon mcmanus is signed as well so we have our kicker of the future those are important and tack mckinley we could pick up his fifth year option i think i'm going to 
I don't know that we're going to sign him to anything long term at this point in time, but it's worth considering, but I'm going to consider it later down the line. Tack McKinley's fifth year option has been picked up, and I am ready to hop in to the 2020 NFL Draft live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Am I, am I doing enough rasp in there? Maybe. That sounds like a Las Vegas crack whore. That's kind of what that voice is, in case you didn't know. Okay, little update. I had to restart, and my PS4 just got unplugged from my foot, so that's a thing that happened. So we're from the start, and I'm trading Mohamed Sanu for a second round pick. No including a 4 and a 7 now, and now I have to go through and make all those same moves uh, to get every player re-signed and the free agent moves, so can't wait for that. Okay, so all the same moves are made. And um, here's the thing, is we pick at number six now, which is a little bit different. I might end up trading down. The Browns have the number one overall pick. Things are weird. Tua just went to the Giants. It's very strange. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take Kay LeVon Chase on right now out of LSU. Now, there's some Falcons fans in my, uh, in my mentions on Twitter. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, by the way, definitely do that. Link is in the description. Instagram too. Twitch, I live stream over there. Uh, definitely check out those links in the description. But people are saying this is Vic Beasley 2.0 when they're not even comparable at all. I don't understand that. Why? Just because he's a good athlete also? People are wild. They say they prefer Epineza. AJ Epineza is a really good player as well. But Caleb on Chase on uh, is really, really good. And definitely not Vic Beasley in any way, shape, or form. So we're going to take him. Caleb on Chase on. Welcome to the Atlanta Falcons. He's number 11 in the class. We took him at number 6. Of course, star or better development. Good speed, finesse moves, block sheds, not too terrible either at 81. Not too bad. And uh, we are now going to go into round number two. Round two, DeAndre Swift is available, as is Henry Ruggs. We don't have a running back anymore. And DeAndre Swift is available in the second round. We get to keep him in state. DeAndre Swift to the Falcons. I mean, I'm all in on that. Let's get it. Ra later in round two, Henry Ruggs is still available. I mean, at what point do I have to pull the trigger on that? Some of these guys just don't go as early as they should. For example, Henry Ruggs III is up so high in the draft class, yet just receivers and QBs and running backs just all hang around and stay on the board. Um, I got to take Henry Ruggs, right? I mean, he's just too good to pass up on. I know I've taken him probably quite a few times. And I know we just got three first-round players, maybe. I don't know if Swift's going to be a first-round guy just because he's a running back. But we probably got three first-round players uh, up through almost to the end of the second round. So we've been doing okay, I guess. I'd also take John Grenard here out of Florida. I think we're going to do that. Jonathan Grenard, 71 overall, star or better development. Another uh, good edge player for us here. More than likely will be a backup at the start. And then uh, maybe earn some playing time as the years go on. Round four, Jordan Elliott. He'll also probably go higher as well. But we need uh, more defensive tackle depth, and he fits the bill. And that's probably going to do it for the, uh, for the draft, to be honest. So this is going to be the team for season, I guess technically number two. Uh, Henry Ruggs is quite the addition. What did I make his speed? Like 97? Yeah, that's about right. He ran 427. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, maybe it could even be 98. But DeAndre Swift will be our starting running back. Wild. Got Jonathan Grenard in there as a new addition. Caleb Von Chase on. Miles Jack. And um, it's a pretty good looking team, honestly. I don't really know that I'll be making any trades this season. If anything, like maybe DeMonte Casey. But I like the depth that we have and I like the players that we have. So I don't really feel a pressing need to make many changes. So I guess let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark and see how we're doing. Okay, midseason mark. Julio Jones is an impending free agent. Also might look to make some trades at this point. I stopped it just before uh, the trade deadline. Keanu Neal's in here. Alex Mack. I'd like to bring all those guys back. But Demonte Casey is probably going to be the odd man out. Contract expiring. 27 years old. 80 overall. This is prime time to trade him. So I think we're going to go ahead and make a move. All right, straight up. Demonte Casey for Dexter Lawrence. We pick up another good defensive tackle. Of course, uh, somewhat local to Georgia, you could say. Uh, 
Clemson, South Carolina, and um, now Dexter Lawrence is headed to the Falcons, and he has three skill points as well that makes him go up to a 79 overall. So quite a good trade for us as DeMonte Casey is going to go to the Giants, and we pick up um, kind of a nose tackle, if I'm honest. So I brought back Keanu Neal. We're running a little bit low on salary. I can't bring back Julio at the moment, so we're going to have to try and clear some things up. And I think, unfortunately, that might be getting rid of Matt Ryan in the very, very near future, which uh, is not ideal, to say the least. I don't really know what we're supposed to do. But that's a huge contract. So Julio Jones is back as well. And um, Alex Mack is... I don't know if we're going to be able to afford him. He's 34. He is regressing. But if we maxed out his potential salary of what I can afford, there's just still no way we can afford him. So that's kind of a tough spot for us at the moment. But, you know, hey, it's a little bit tough to manage these contracts sometimes. You have some of these, like, really, really good players, really uh, highly paid players, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Deion Jones. It's tough, but we're going to deal. All right, so we would not make the playoffs, unfortunately. But uh, such is the case, uh, as we usually see. 8-7-1, and one, but the team is improving a little bit, as uh, we should be really, really good in the next couple of years. Bunch of talent, although with Julio and Matt Ryan regressing, it's kind of tough. DeAndre Swift, superstar development. I thought he would have been superstar X-Factor, but superstar is still good. Caleb on Chase on has superstar. Um... I mean, it's a good team. It really is. Jonathan Gennard, star. Our defensive line is very, very good. I think we need to improve at linebacker and across the offensive line, at right guard, right tackle, and center, and we're going to be in a good shape. Now, if we check out the stats of this past season, our offense was very, very good, which means that our defense must have held us back quite a bit. One of the worst defenses in football, and that goes to our 8-7-1 record, but our offense is doing well enough. DeAndre Swift was uh, not too amazing. Still rushed for over 1,000 yards as a rookie. Calvin Ridley, Henry Ruggs, and Julio Jones were incredible. Austin Hooper with quite a performance as well. Defensively, Deion Jones had a hell of a season. Tackles, tackles for loss, sacks, and interceptions all in a really, really good spot. We'll check out sacks here. 10 for the rookie, Caleb on Chason out of LSU. Deion Jones, another LSU guy. So I guess we were really drafting LSU linebackers, although uh, Caleb on Chason is an edge rusher even if he might have that uh, outside linebacker classification, depending on what team he plays for, as Marcus Mariota wins MVP with the 10-6 Tennessee Titans. NFC Offense Player of the Year, Aaron Rodgers. Matt Ryan at 8. Defense Player of the Year, Deion Jones. Miles Jack at 5. Offensive Rick of the Year is Tua Tungavailoa with the New York Giants. DeAndre Swift at 3. Henry Ruggs at 4. Defensive Rick of the Year, Isaiah Simmons with the Redskins. Kate LeVon Chase on at 3. And Jonathan Grenard at 8. Pounds and Rams in the Super Bowl. Wild. Alex Mack has regressed down to 81. We're going to let him walk. Contract is not worth it. Age, regression, not worth it. We'll just look to improve uh, in the draft. That's really what we have to do. We don't have enough money to really do anything in free agency. So simulating to the draft, it is. Being at number 17 overall, of course, this is an auto-generated class. And some really, really bad players going off the board for 71 and then 68. The Jags took a shot at a UNLV receiver, Chris Harvey. Who's the last good University of Nevada, Las Vegas player you can think of? The Rebels. I can't think of even one. This dude's name is Terry. Terry. <laughs> Not to be confused with Tamorian Terry, the Florida State receiver. This is just Terry Terry. Interesting. I mean, I'm going to take this quarterback. Daniel Crowder out of Washington looks incredible. Great profile. 6'3", 223. Rocket arm. Probably looks great in shorts. Big hands. A-plus throw power. 4'5", 340. Can do it all. I got to take him. 74 overall star. Better development. Ranked number 15 in the class. We took him at 17. He's got 92 throw power to go along with. 88 speed. 91 acceleration. 88 agility. 69 carrying. Nice. Decent short accuracy as well. So that is a hell of a draft pick to start things off. Take a right tackle here in round two. Nolan Nolan Cohen looks incredible. Great top skills. 42 reps. Unbelievable. And he is the newest member 
of the Atlanta Falcons, 76 overall, number eight in the draft. We took him at 49. Star better development. Incredible pick. All right, we're going to be taking a big reach here. Keyshawn Hargrave projected round seven. We're taking him at round three. 70 overall, number 38 in the class. Took him at 81. Only normal development. Uh, no run blocking to him at all, but decent player. Four and three at the midseason mark here, so there is some improvement from this point last year now the offense is not exactly where we'd like to be regressing down to a 79 overall as matt ryan is now at an 80 we don't have much at center unfortunately so we might move the offensive line around a little bit and maybe that means playing caleb mcgarry inside what's cohen's profile six six three twelve you're going to play right guard. I'm also going to move Crowder into the starting QB role. There's no real point to play him under Matt Ryan at this point. They're pretty much the same overall. And Daniel Crowder is on the uptick. Matt Ryan trending downward. There's just no point to have Matt Ryan there. So Crowder is my new starting QB. Now, whether or not he can actually win Offensive Rookie of the Year on limited snaps here in year one for him is going to be interesting to see a lot of good free agents here as well calvin ridley tack mckinley isaiah oliver probably my top priorities all right isaiah oliver tack mckinley calvin ridley all return the rest i can worry about a little bit later Ido smith i don't really care for too much for yasadi alakun don't really care so we actually would end up making the playoffs at 10 and 6. Not a huge surprise, but uh, it's always a surprise when you make the playoffs. And we had the fifth best offense. Now, Daniel Crowder, bottom of the league in most of his numbers. But you got to remember that he played a significant amount uh, less than you know most of the quarterbacks in the league and put up better numbers than Matt Ryan in the same amount of games. So uh, great stuff for Daniel Crowder. Awesome rookie season for him. Maybe Offensive Rookie of the Year. DeAndre Swift had a really good year. Love to see that from him. Julio was dominant. Calvin Ridley was great. Austin Hooper had a hell of a year as well. And then defensively, Miles Jack really took over with very similar numbers to what Deion Jones put up last year. 12 and a half sacks for McKinley, 8 for Chase Son. And then interceptions, 3 for Keanu Neal and Ricardo Allen. Not too bad. Andrew Luck back with the Colts one MVP. Okay. Forgot it. that's a thing. Uh, NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Zeke. No Falcons, defense player of the year, Aaron Donald. Miles Jack at four. Offensive rookie of the year does, does go to Daniel Crowder. Okay. Love to see that. And then defensive rookie of the year, Isaiah Thornhill. The Lions. And Crowder actually has superstar development. What a draft pick he's turned out to be already. Already paying dividends. Offensive line, I moved some guys around Hargrave to center. Uh, I told you guys I was moving Cohen inside to right guard. And then defensively, uh, I mean, Caleb on Chase, and we know it's superstar Isaiah Oliver. The team is just progressing, and it's good to see. It really is. Now, we're going to be losing some of these guys. Ricardo Allen and Foyasadi Olakun probably going to have to replace them, I think. Might do one more season after this. It's the playoffs. We got the Green Bay Packers in the wild card. Can we beat them in advance to the divisional? We shall see. It doesn't go fast because it's offline. I forgot. Oh, yes, we can. 20 to 14 is your final. Love that. And we beat the Saints as well. We crushed them 34 to 7. And now it is Falcons, 49ers in Santa Clara, California. The 49ers are an 85 overall to our 86. We're going to hop in, Super Sim. See if we can walk out of here with the W. Very close game so far. 17-10. Now 17-17. 49ers take the slight lead. And we tie it up very quickly. 49ers do the exact same thing. Minute 47 to go. No timeouts for Atlanta. We're getting the punt return. I'm taking over. Mitch Wisnowski is going to kick it back deep to Anderson. Big return here. And I'm, I'm probably going to go for two if we score a touchdown. Oh, I forgot how fast uh, Crowder is. We might be just be able to run a lot and we're going to do exactly that sliding down a rush is 43 yards for him already i know it's the fourth quarter but i'm saying it's interesting because cp doesn't really uh run quite as much and we're going to step up to avoid pressure 
looking for something. Can we get that in there? Okay. Uh, didn't expect him to run back towards the ball. I was trying to lead him up the sideline, and he just started running back. No good. But whenever I get these mobile quarterbacks, all I want to do is run. Third and three. Huge down for us. We got rugs over the middle. Look at that speed. Putting it to great use. Let's go ahead and move into the hurry up. Might run the same play. See what we can do here. 10 second runoff is quite a lot. But we're going with rugs again. This time catch and run. Should have possession caught because he dropped it. And that's an interception somehow? Are you kidding me? This animation driven game is so frustrating to me. It is unbelievable. Um, this was a tough play in general. I want to see if anything else got open here. Uh, not really. With pressure, we had to get rid of the ball. This was the most open receiver. And check out this animation. I throw the ball here. He's right on him, to be fair. Uh, even though we have inside leverage, the ball is thrown. And there's no animation for the receiver uh, to ever try and be a receiver. Fred Warner just automatically locks in into that animation for the interception. That's so frustrating. That's so frustrating. And we're going to lose here in season number three. And the Super Bowl was Chiefs Niners. That's fun. This time, the 49ers got the best of the Chiefs. 38-17. It was 31-20 Chiefs in real life. But this is also 2021. So maybe we'll be seeing a Super Bowl rematch? I don't know. But uh, what I do know is that Ricardo Allen's not going back. Ito Smith is not coming back. Foyasade Olokun, not coming back. Did I say Diedrich earlier? I might have said Diedrich, so not... Diedrin. Not a whole lot of cap room again. It's going to be tough to really get anybody, so I don't think we're going to be able to. So we're just going to go ahead and rock with what we have, which isn't bad. We still have a good team. Picking all the way down at number 29 overall. So we have a lot of room to go, but uh, we'll see who our choice is. Pick here for me is going to be another offensive lineman. Cam Walters out of Tennessee. Looks pretty good. Great combine, great ability. And star, better development. Number eight in the class. This is deja vu with the right tackle we took last year. Same overall. Star, better development. Number eight in the class. Beast. Not quite as strong, but maybe a little bit better technically with run blocking and pass blocking. His attributes look to be uh, definitely very, very good. All right, I was going to take offensive line here, but we're going to take a backup tight end in John Crisp, hopefully running crisp routes for us. 75 overall, star better development. Disgusting number with 43, but he's 6'6", 271. Number 14 in the class, 82 speed to go with 271. That is a heavy, heavy, heavy tight end. Now, one of the heaviest tight ends I can really even think of, who is a really good receiver, is Gronk in recent years, and I would be shocked if he even got up to 260. Uh, what, a, what a massive human being. Gronk, 268. Um, in his final season. So, I mean, that's heavier than I even thought it was, but I would have had him probably 258, but he was 10 pounds heavier than that. Um, but a decent player for us, for sure. But 271, that is a big fella. And our last pick is going to be a backup linebacker. 67 overall, number 69 in the class. Nice. Number 93 overall uh, is where we took him. And that will be our draft. So this is the team for what should be the final season. Walters is going to play right tackle for us. Better than Caleb McGarry. Why not? This is the team for what could be the final season. It's a pretty good group, if I do say so myself. And I like the offensive line. I like the receiving core. I think the backfield is fantastic. Got a good backup tight end now. The defense looks like it could be pretty solid. We're just missing a free safety. I'm going to trade for one. He's on the trade block, and I'm making a trade for him. It's a three, a four, and a five for CGJ Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, former Florida Gator now, uh, now of the New Orleans Saints. I didn't like how I said Gator, like I'm an old a man from New York. I know I'm from New Jersey, but I don't say Gator. Or like, I'm not from the Bayou either. I ain't from no Bayou either. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, former Florida Gator. Thank you. He's going to be starting at free safety now. Yeah, that was, uh, I didn't like any of what I just said. Any of what came out of my mouth, I didn't care for it, but it's better than things going in my mouth most of the time. So we're going to go ahead and um, do wide receiver training boost and simulate to the midseason mark.
Man, season mark. We are four and four. Still in a good spot to take the division. Just got to amp it up a little bit, man. Can't grow complacent now. First round bye. Even after a loss to the Giants in week 17, we finished 11 and five. So not too bad at all. Uh, middle of the road offense trending towards the better part of the league. Daniel Crowder, decent year. DeAndre Swift was also quite good. Uh, Crowder really took over as a, a rusher, though. No 1,000 yards receivers, but, I mean, guys were close. Julio Jones, great year again, 12 touchdowns. Uh, and then defensively, Isaiah Oliver led us in tackles, which is interesting. Ten and a half sacks for Cade LeVon Chase on. Uh, not a whole lot of interceptions for our defense. Maybe that's part of why um, we weren't quite as good. I mean, 11 games is still excellent, so I can't really be too mad about that. Also, I had to check awards, even though I doubt we're even going to be in contention for anything. Mahomes wins MVP, no Falcons, NFC Offense Player of the Year, Ezekiel Elliott, Daniel Crowder at three, Defense Player of the Year, Khalil Mack, Offense Rookie of the Year, Wes Bryson, John Crisp at three, Defense Rookie of the Year, Mick McLeod, no Falcons. All right, we got the Cardinals 11-5 and five in the Divisional. We're going to hop in, and we're going to see if we can take them out. They are, show me like an 80 overall. 83 we're in 88 they got patrick queen oh no we got a pretty good lead so far it's a 30 to 3 they just scored for the first time this is domination the cardinals are an abomination i got my uh slam poetry gig coming soon <laughs> yeah, they're the worst red birds clearly shout out dirty birds moving on oh Saints Falcons Conference Championship. We get home field advantage, of course. But big division rivalry. Both 88 overalls. Everything on the line here. Not a good start so far. Down 20 to 6. But we've made a little bit of a comeback. I mean it's it's a touchdown game. Do we jump in yet? Maybe, maybe not. 30 to 20. It's not looking so good. Although, it's now only a field goal game. The comeback is real. And we're going to get the football back. We're driving. Come on, somebody make a play. Daniel Crowder to Henry Ruggs. Second and five. That is a huge gain. No, we fumbled? That's no good. But defense, Justin Herbert's their quarterback. We're back on offense now. We're making some big plays. Another first down. That is a huge gain. Daniel Crowder to DeAndre Swift for 21 yards. And we are about to score. I'm jumping in. I'm making it happen. I hope. Let's get it to DeAndre Swift. Want to chew a little bit of clock. Don't want to score just yet. Here we go. Second and goal. 30 seconds to play. Touchdown. Yeah, we got it. That's all day. I mean, I knew what I was doing from the start. It was always going to be a run. <laughs> And I'll take it. We're going to go up by four here. And that is the game. Falcons come out victorious, and we are headed to the Super Bowl. Justin Herbert just didn't have enough today. The Chiefs once again back in the Super Bowl. We'll take a look at our final team since this is the final year. Any development changes? Crowder's up to a 90 overall, by the way. And then defensively, Miles Jack, superstar. He might have gone up to that. I mean, it's a really, really good looking team. The only thing that's kind of is uglier is uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with the bronze behind him with the uh, normal development. But Super Bowl, Arizona, Chiefs, what's the United Falcons? 88-84, <laughs> but they got Patrick Mahomes, they got Travis Kelsey, they got Tyreek Hill. They got a lot of good players. This one, not going to be too easy. Our offense better show up, man, because our defense, I mean, 10 points to the Chiefs and a half is, is playing pretty well. Our offense is not showing up. Our offense is not showing up at all. We're down 20 to 6. This is going to be tough. We finally scored, though, and now it's a game. I'm going to have to jump in on defense. I'm going to have to. And we need to tackle for loss here. Sack, something like that. And we're in the backfield. Oh, my goodness. We couldn't get to Mahomes. That's crazy. I thought it was going to be a run, so... Um, I didn't go for the sack. Third and two. We need to stop here. Badly. Game on the line. 
And we couldn't. We couldn't. I mean, calling timeouts doesn't do anything at this point. The game is over. Unfortunate way to end here, losing in the Super Bowl. Our team just didn't come to play. We scored 13 points in four quarters of football. Just didn't have it. This is your final team, 88 overall. Bunch of really good players on this team. Henry Ruggs, DeAndre Swift. We had this sick quarterback we drafted, Daniel Crowder. Only 24 years old, 90 overall. 95 throw power, 89 speed, monster. Even though he couldn't do anything in the Super Bowl, I'm sure he'll be back at some point. Uh, great defense. We got Caleb on Chase on in there. Bunch of really talented guys. So this was a fun rebuild for sure. But that is going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.